Hi everyone, uh, welcome to Closure North 2020. My name is Alexander Furkin, and I'll be talking about gluing Closure microservices or uh, Closure microservices with one line of code, or at least aiming to be. Um, so any project tends to start as a small prototype and we build and deploy it in the simplest possible way. Uh, that means we would have some sort of a monolith application deployed on a single machine somewhere. We might have an API uh, there. Um, we might have a bunch of libraries with logic tucked away neatly in there. Um, and it's fairly easy to call functions and share variables and share memory. Uh, but when we, when we want to scale to support more users, we typically look towards uh, microservices architectures. Uh, so we might have the same components there, but now they're over the network. And the reason we do that is that we can scale them independently. So we can deploy multiple APIs, we can deploy multiple um, of these uh, services, uh, multiple copies of these services, um, and it saves us on cost because we don't need to replicate uh, one giant machine over and over again with components that we don't actually need. But that comes at the cost of complexity because now all our functions are actually over the network and we can't, we can't uh, share uh, variables or memory in a straightforward way. So I wrote two little toy projects that aim to abstract some of that glue code required to create microservices quickly. Um, the first one is EasyRPC, and it aims to provide an easy way to break your libraries into microservices. And the way it works is, say when you write your library, let's say my lib, and it's very easy to call any library function, right, when it's on the same machine. You just require a library and call the function. Um, so when EasyRPC aims to do is to make it almost as easy to call your function on a remote service. And the way it does that, so on the server side, you simply write a one-liner RPC server start and pass a config to it, which we'll talk about later. Um, on the client side, all you need to do is create a client, and then every time um, you call your function, my function, you simply replace it with an RPC call. So you use the client, you pass the function name into it, and you pass the uh, variables into it. And EasyRPC takes care of you know, sending the request, receiving the response, serializing, deserializing, and everything in between. Um, the second one uh, is called Redis Atom. And it gives you a way to safely share state between your services. And it uh, does that using uh, Redis. And it also does that using the familiar closure Atom API. So if you're using Atom, you don't really need to change almost anything about your code. Um, so, and here's what you actually need to change. So if you use a closure Atom, uh, you typically call you know, Atom and you pass the initial state to it. When you use Redis Atom, you simply define, uh, you call Redis Atom, you pass a uh, Redis connection spec, like you do with uh, Carmine, and you pass a Redis key to dereference that information, and you pass the initial state. And that's it. Everything else is exactly the same as with closure atoms. You don't need to change anything about your code. So how does this actually work in practice? Let's look at a silly example. Uh, we're going to build the first generation of Borg telemetry sharing infrastructure. So if you're not familiar with Star Trek lore, you can look up a Borg at a later time. And uh, here's our typical user. This is a Borg drone, and yeah, we're going to have a lot of them. Uh, Borg operate as a hive mind, and that means they need to share all the information between them. Now, if we're talking about a few of them, it's quite easy for them to synchronize um, their the, older knowledge about the world. One would simply transfer its knowledge to you know, the one next to it, and then next to it, and before you know it, they're all synchronized. Uh, but it becomes more difficult when we increase the number of participants in this network. Um, according to the internet, a Borg cube with a skeleton crew houses about 5,000 drones. 
And Borg cubes have been known to carry more than 100,000 drones. And we're not even talking about the larger Borg collective here, just one typical spaceship. Um, so we'll need some sort of central service to facilitate sharing of the information between all these drones. A naive example of how to go about doing it would be something like this. So we'd have a database for persistent storage, and we'd have a backend server in front of it. And this server would expose an API for uploading telemetry packets, let's call them data, sorry, deltas, and downloading a compiled snapshot of the sum of all knowledge of the drones on the network. Let's call it Sigma. Now we would also have some sort of a cron job to compile these snapshots at some fixed interval so that uh, they're ready to be downloaded as soon as they're requested. So we don't have to generate them on demand. So once we begin to organize our code, a natural step would be to put all the functionality related to snapshots into one library. Let's call it snap. Now we can imagine that the order of events here would be something like this. Uh, each drone, or all drones, will post it to telemetry packets to the backend API, and it would immediately store them in the database. Then at some fixed interval, our uh, cron job will order the creation of a new snapshot by calling snap create new. Uh, the snap library will fetch all the telemetry uh, that came in after the last snapshot was compiled as well as the latest snapshot itself. Um, then it will compile a new snapshot from all this data and store it in the database. Now when a drone requests to download the latest snapshot, the API will simply call something like get latest, and snap will retrieve the latest snapshot from the database and send it back to the user. Now this sounds like a plan, but we can still make it a bit more efficient by adding some cache um, and this way, we don't need to make a database call every time one of our 100,000 plus drones requests the latest snapshot. We'll use a closure atom for this, and we'll initialize it with the latest uh, snapshot value that's available in the database, you know, when the server starts. And the new process would look something like this. Uh, so when cron calls create new, uh, snap will fetch all the telemetry, um, and then get the latest snapshot itself from, a newly, from our newly introduced cache. Okay, so we're just deriving cache, we're not doing a database call. And then we'll compile a new snapshot from all this data and store it in the database. Uh, but this time it will also update the cache with the new sigma. Now when a drone requests to download the latest snapshot, the API again will call get latest, uh, but this time, uh, instead of a database trip, SNAP will simply deref the cache. So we can probably get away with serving 5,000 units and more with this setup, uh, but let's try to make it work with an order of magnitude more users. So our next stop is microservices. Um, and here we're going to break out SNAP as a microservice, and we're going to call it SNAP Micro. Uh, the uh, advantages of that is that SNAP Micro is probably a very resource intensive uh, process. So we want to deploy it on a big machine, much bigger than we would need for the APIs. Um, and this gives us ability to dynamically scale the APIs as well, because then can, they can be deployed on smaller machines and we can spin them up or down as we wish. And we can s scale Snap Micro vertically. <clears throat> the disadvantages of that now uh, Snap Micro is on the ser is uh, a microservice. It's on the network, so we can't just call functions. We need to write an API to serve the functionality, and then we need to write uh, client libraries so that the APIs can um, use that, um, so that we don't have to you know deal with HTTP error codes and whatnot at every call set. So this is where EasyRPC can be helpful. Um, on the server side, if you remember, all we need to do is write one liner to start the RPC servers and pass a config to it. So here's the config. The config is fairly simple. It simply has the uh, 
namespace that we want to uh, serve the functionality of. It has the protocol we want to use, in this case HTTP, and it has a URL and a port. It has where the service is actually deployed. On the client side, what we need is to create an RPC client and tweak the call sites a little bit. So instead of invoking the library directly with snap create new, for example, we make a remote call by passing the function name to the client. And the same goes for get latest. Now, next obvious step is to deploy cache as a microservice. And we want to do that because we rather uh, use Snap Micro's machine memory to actually compile snapshots and not hold um, data that uh, doesn't really change much, relatively speaking. Uh, so Redis is a popular memory store uh, and it's typically used for caching, so let's use that. And this is where Redis Atom comes in handy. So by simply changing our Atom to Redis Atom, we can keep using the same closure API we used. So here we're simply we'll require Redis Atom, and instead of defining Atom, we will uh, define Redis Atom, we'll pass a connection spec, we'll pass a Redis key, and we'll pass the initial value. And uh, at this point, we're uh, basically ready to start our campaign for galactic domination. Um, so the main takeaways is that we spend more time iterating over our backend, um, over our backend architecture, than we spent actually writing microservice glue code, because we didn't actually have to change much uh, to break out two microservices here. But the biggest change was on the RPC client side, where we created a client and then changed the function calls to RPC calls. And on the snapshot side, there was hardly any change at all. So we almost didn't touch the library code. We simply um, used a one-liner to start a server, and we changed the definition of an atom to be a Redis atom. And that's basically it. Um, so thanks very much for listening. And you can find all the, all the uh, code in this example on my GitHub, along with uh, EasyRPC and Redis atom and a few other things. And thanks again, and have fun at the conference.